Hello and welcome. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Streamlined Connection is where we talk about how m the mindset uh, connects with the way you want to get organized and be organized and who you want to be in that organized environment. So it's all about how to make the connections to live the life you really want. It's that freedom you desire with the control. Um, so how you seek that, that um, the control and how you seek the freedom is where we, we meet with the Streamlined Connection. It's how we bring it all together. Today, um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about money beliefs because how you do money is how you do everything. But I also want to give you just a little bit of information about who I am for those of you that don't know. So I'm a certified professional organizer. That means I actually sat for a test and have to keep up my education. So I know a lot of different ways to get organized. That way I can match them with how you want to be organized and live your life. Um, I also, through the years, realized about this money connection that we have to our stuff. It shows up in your clutter, your stuff, your relationships, and your uh, schedule. And so I started exploring how to work on money mindset to help bring it all together. And that's when I became a certified um, money breakthrough business coach as well. So all the pieces of the puzzle fit together so that we can live that life we love. And um, I'm excited today to talk about the limiting money beliefs. And when I first started working with clients, I would, I would hear their excuses. And it took me a little while to put together that the excuses really had quite a bit to do with how they thought about their money situation. And it was showing up in the things in their house and how they responded to change in their environment. And so I, I am just fascinated. And the more I learn about money and how money works, the more excited I become about how to help my clients because it is super easy once you realize a couple of kind of uh, threshold concepts about money and, and what it is in our, you know, I'm, I'm speaking about America right now because that's what I know most, but it, the money beliefs can play out in any kind of economic system. So just know that that if you're watching from afar, that um, these same concepts come, they also apply to you, but they may present or need to be adjusted just a little bit to your individual situations. Um, things like, and I, I've mentioned some of these on the other shows as well, so you can go back and listen to those and see um where it connects with some of the other things. But I, you know, you ask someone to get rid of something and it's like, but I might need it someday. Well, what is this mindset that you wouldn't be able to replace that thing if and when you needed that? And would you be able to replace that thing in 20 minutes for $20 within 20 miles, like the minimalists talk about? Or is it much more of a, it's very special um, thing to me that I know I'm going to use in a specific project, or is it just covering all your bases because you can't make a decision and you aren't sure on how you're going to live your life. And so you aren't sure if you don't have the clarity to know if you're going to need that item in the future. So that's how it all comes together um, in terms of how I approached it. But some of the most common things I hear are that I might need it someday, or I spent good money on that, which it implies that some money is bad. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. I don't know where this money is good or bad thing came from exactly. You know, some people uh, take it back to the Bible and the money is the root of all evil, but that's not the actual quote. And gosh, I should have looked that up for us today. But um there is something to that, like somewhere along the line, we begin believing that money is is bad. So we'll explore that a little bit more today as well. Um, and then we're going to talk about the fact that you need to 
empower yourself about money because we do not do a great job of talking about money here in America, especially we aren't really taught in school or if we are, it's like one small module in high school about money and economics and it doesn't really explain what to do day to day. And if your parents aren't good at teaching you about money, where exactly are you learning about it? Um, the news isn't great about explaining money and even, um, you know, the, sh the actual news shows that are about finance and money, that's actually news about the stock market, which is not about money or how money works or how we experience our own relationships with money. So we're going to look at how to empower yourself about money a little bit. Um, let's see. The, the other one I hear a lot is um, I it was on sale. It was a bargain. Uh, it plays a little bit to the I might need it someday in terms of uh, a bit of a poverty mindset, um, not in terms of I'm poor, so I'm going to buy it now because I have the money, although that sometimes happens, but more of a there won't be more of the money in the future at some future date when you actually need the thing. And so we hold on to things because we're actually kind of afraid of our own security and safety and um, being able to live in the future if we run out of money, which is a, a completely fear-based way of looking at it. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. Um, the <laughs> One of my favorite ones is, I was actually just listening to a podcast about um, the paradox of philanthropy and the difference between making a lot of money and giving a lot of money away and, um, you know, philanthropists and how they have they spend money on on big parties and galas and things like that to make more money for for their um, endeavors. And it's interesting. I didn't realize until I started learning about how people think about money, how misguided some of that information that's out there um, is about uh, big dollar amounts of money. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Right after this break, I am Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on the Bold Brave TV network, and I'll talk to you after the break. The free one minute mail solution works for email too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. Before the break, I was talking about how um, money how we do money is how we do everything and we're not really taught about money. And so the very first thing you might want to do is start empowering yourself about money and how money works, not only how income and expenses might affect your business or your household, but how, um, you know, people always say, well, I'm not good at money, so I need a budget, but budgets don't always solve the problem because I realized when I didn't have a whole lot of money that I would budget and if I didn't have enough to cover the bills or to buy that one extra thing that I was budgeting for, it made me feel really bad. And so I just want to assure everybody that budgeting is not the actual answer. Budgeting is a way to track your money and reach money goals, but it doesn't help you accumulate wealth or freedom or get organized in any way. Um, if you are on that edge where you're you're struggling to make ends meet. It's a lot easier once the cash flow evens out. However, I still find it really disturbing on those days when I don't have enough to do the thing I wanted to do or the amount I budgeted is not correct. So I, there's a bit of a myth about budgeting. You know, even in companies and government, you budget something and you allocate the resources, the financial resources, the money, the actual cash to do that thing. And something's always going to go wrong and it's going to cost more or something won't be available or some part of the project will get abandoned and then the money isn't in the right spot. So it's constantly juggling. So think of budgeting more as the tracking of where your money currently is and where you can move it around to if needed. Um, at a certain point though, you can change that tracking into games of let me reach these bigger and broader goals with, with my income and or cutting expenses. So just know that budgeting, while it's important to understand what, um, 
where your money is and where it's going and assigning a purpose for your money, it's not quite the same thing as budgeting. So I love to to think about money in terms of purpose. I'm going to use this for my housing and household. I'm going to use this for my personal stuff. I'm going to use this for my kids. I'm going to use this for running my business. That kind of broader category will help you um, when you're just getting started and learning about money. It doesn't have to be as granular um, as, as some budgets make it out to be. Like, this is all my insurance payments. This is all my car payments, that kind of thing. Um, but it's also really fun to learn how money works, what's expected, how much you need, and then kind of figure out for yourself what makes sense. Our brains process information differently. So for me, a budget and, and that method of tracking is not ideal. But for someone that processes and really loves a good checklist and filling out forms to orient themselves, using a budget as that guide, but knowing that it's not set in stone and it is a flexible structure will help you too. Um, I realized when I was working uh, retail back in the 90s that a lot of my coworkers were always upset about how much money they made, how much money they had. Um, they would get really upset about not being paid enough for their worth. And so a lot of how much income we make is tied up in our self-worth. And so when you start feeling um, like you don't have enough, sometimes it's a good idea to just look at yourself and how you're feeling about yourself. And are you feeling heard? Are you feeling confident in your skills and your ability to communicate? Um, and is there a way you can work on that that would help you get that next promotion, get that raise. Um, and, and it was interesting too, how many people never talk to their manager about their feelings about their work. What if you could talk to the people you work for and told them you didn't like this aspect of your job, but you would love to take on this other thing because it would be more challenging. You would enjoy your job. You would therefore do a better job and you could rise up in the organization quicker and more easily because you're enjoying what you do instead of complaining all the time. Or if you own a business, instead of spending money on all the little bells and whistles, what if you actually defined how you want to work and who you want to work with and let things kind of fall into place and, and be guided one step at a time of what your next step to run your business is. It's a little bit of a scary thing, but that's how I ran my business. Each piece fell into place as I learned more about how I wanted to live and who I wanted to work with, and it gave me the guidance, the clarity of what to say yes and no to on your schedule and what you're spending money on. See how it's all starting to connect? All right. The other thing we want to uh, learn about money is money itself. I've had a lot of conversations recently with people about crypto, mostly people in my family that don't really seem to understand that all money is a construct. It's a method and a token, if you will, to exchange goods and services. So they're always saying cash, but I have the cash. But what's behind the cash? It's not connected to the gold standard anymore. And even when it was, what is gold? It's a shiny piece of rock. So who puts the value on it and how much it's worth is all a construct. It's imaginary. It's kind of freeing when you think about it that way. It both allows you to um, need less and or get creative about using less money or opposite, get innovative and creative about using more money in different ways that may impact more people or may bring an idea to fruition. But money itself is just a construct about how we value our work and our goods and services. Sure, that thing was on sale for only a dollar, but if you didn't need it in the first place, was that really a bargain? Or did you just waste a dollar spending it on something? So figuring out what money is, how it powers commerce, especially in this capitalist society, who has access to the money, where it comes from, um, is kind of a, a, one of those things we don't learn until we start looking at it. So by all means, start reading some books, start listening to some podcasts, and take everything with a grain of salt because everything is coming 
um, especially about money, it's coming to you uh, with some bias attached. So whether it is, um, you know, we need to help more people with the money or we need to create more ideas and, and solve problems with the money, it all comes from the same place. People wanting to be who they are to explain the world around them. So figure out who you want to be and the clarity of how you spend your money and what you're going to do to earn your money will become clear. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network, and we'll be back after this break. The Quick Start Organizing Series curated to point you to my best blog post to get you started eliminating distractions on focusing on what's important. And before the break, we were talking about how to learn more about how money works. And I'm not just talking about buying stocks and trading stocks or figuring out how to track your expenses, although that's a piece of it too, but how money actually is used to, to create transactions. It gives you a little bit more insight, and I found it really freeing once I understood how things were working and I could find ways around some of the stuff that wasn't working for me because I understood how the rest worked. You know, kind of the inside baseball point of view. If you understand it, it's more interesting, and then you can start playing the games with it. And this connects a lot with the one of the limiting many beliefs that people have, you know, in addition to the, I'm just bad at money, because you don't understand it, is the fact that you hear it all the time, right? Rich people are not nice. They're greedy, they're mean, they're a-holes, if you will. They don't like to um, help the little guy. They've forgotten everything. They're just um, in their own little worlds. All these little comments about rich people really are interesting because think about it. Have you met any rich people? I mean, uber rich people, like multi, multi hundred millionaires and billionaires. Have you ever met a trillionaire? So how do you know these things about them? All we see is the little slice of life that occasionally gets put on TV, but you don't actually know them in their day-to-day -day life. So think about that. What if they were saying the same thing about you and they had never met you? So let's, that's just one of those relationships with people connected to your relationship with money. You don't actually know that yet. So what if instead of money making people greedy and rich, all rich people are jerks, what if you started thinking about what if rich people were the key to solving some world problems? What if I could be one of those rich people that changed the way other people think about rich people? What if I just let that go and didn't even deal with it because it doesn't affect you on a day-to-day -day basis? right? What energy would that free up? What creativity would come to you? Um, so think about that, right? And, and it applies to around your stuff in that I hear clients all the time say, I can't afford that, or I can't, that's way more than I thought. Well, what if, you know, let me, let me take a, a small business example. I have a lot of coaching clients that start out saying, I don't have enough money to spend on marketing. And I argue that you don't have enough money to not spend on marketing because if no one knows about you, no one's going to hire you to do the thing you do that will bring the money to you so that you can do more of the thing you do in front of more people and get um, more money because they're buying the things that are resonating with them, right? It's about getting your stuff out there and face it, marketing is a part of business. We don't necessarily love it, but it is if you think about it in terms of how we communicate our knowledge and um, our solutions to the people with the problem that we solve, it becomes a lot easier. It is now sharing our knowledge to empower other people and marketing becomes a lot more easy, right? And so it comes down to the, the products as well. Like how is it being marketed to you? It's another place you can empower yourself. How does marketing actually work? How does it make me feel bad enough to want to buy this cheap shampoo instead of um, spending money on the shampoo that actually works for my hair type in my climate that is maybe a, a dollar or two more? What What is it about the messages you're hearing that makes you want that product over that product? or to eat or drink that thing over the other thing. 
do you want a Red Bull or do you want orange juice, right? It happens all the time. And it can come down to money and it can come down to just misunderstanding how marketing works, but it's what makes the money go round. So um, think about that. You don't need to have all the status symbols to still be rich. And then you would have saved that money that other people spend on status symbols to use for the good that you wanted to do in the world. Or vice versa. You already have a bunch of money and it's really hard to tell what to spend it on. And so you treat yourself, you reward yourself, or you um, encounter the things that are more expensive in your day-to-day -day life because you're living a little bit differently. It's not to say one or the other is good or bad. Um, I will say many of my millionaire clients still shop uh, bargain bins because there are some things that you just aren't willing to spend money on. But if you define who you want to be and how you want to live, you get to make those choices, right? Um, and it's an imaginative thing. You can be creative the more money you have. In, and before you have the money, you can start imagining how you would do it differently. And it's really fun. And it actually impacts how much money actually shows up for you because you are paying attention to it in some form or fashion. So you pretend to a certain extent, this is where that um, fake it till you make it thing comes in. I don't want you to be fake. I want you to be full on you, but I want you to start paying attention to money, how the money lives in your wallet, how the money lives in on your desk, in your bank accounts, how much you rely on plastic versus actual cash. Um, which isn't really that big of a difference because remember it's a construct. Um, but start paying attention to money, find money, seek it out. It'll start appearing. When I first started doing this, I go on a morning walk every morning and I would find a penny. And then the next day or two, I would find like three pennies on my morning walk. And a few days later I would find nickels. And I kid you not, by the end of the first year, I had found a hundred dollar bill on the ground in the park. So just know that it's kind of weird, but if you pay attention to money, you will notice money that has been in your environment the whole time and you can pick it up because it is now yours. It's been put in front of you. You can reach it. That is not to say, say go steal a bunch of stuff or rob a bank. That is saying look for it that comes to you properly and frequently out in the universe. Um, the other thing about money is the more money you have, the more money you make. And it's easier to make more money than to make less money. All those hours you work and all the complaining you do take so much time and effort. And so take a look at what else you do that could bring money in. Can you sell something? Do you have an idea? Do you, can you gather people together to do an investment club. There's all kinds of ways to make more money, but it really is easier to make more than to make less. So we'll look at that a little bit more after the break. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The link's around here somewhere. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about not actually knowing any rich people, so not commenting about how they play with their money or deal with their money um, because we don't know. And to get informed about how you can learn more about money and how it works so that you can play with it too. Um, and you know, how part of this imagining what you would do differently, there's this fantastic game that a coach had me play when I was first learning about money. And I now share it with everyone because it was such an eye opener for me. So you take um, 30 days and you start on day one with $1. And on day two, you spend $2. And on day three, you spend $4. And each day you double the amount of money you're spending. And you imagine what you would spend that on. So on day one, you have a dollar. So I don't know, maybe you buy a small soda, maybe you buy something, but the trick is every day, the money must be allocated to something. So when you get up into some of the other numbers, you end up having a little bit of leftovers and you can't just leave it there. You have to actually say it's in savings or it will be applied to the next thing on your list. The eye opening part of that is just how fast 
it accumulates. This, this helps you understand how rich people have a hard time spending enough money to make a dent in their fortune because by the end of the month, I had bought like three houses, put all my nieces and nephews through college, had bought my dream home and a car or two. I had bought some jewelry. I had upgraded all my electronics. I had done all these things. I had set aside some money for travel and there was still so much left over. I had set up a philanthropic organization and was buying art all over the world. So it's just really an interesting eye opener to see just how much money there is. And once you get that thing you want or you feel you're working towards and may never get, once you have it, what's next and how can you make that happen? So I suggest you all play the game. It's just an eye opener and it can really change your life. Um, and it, it can be subtle. You can start by just upgrading, you know, what brand of things you're buying. And then you end up spending more and more and more and more. And it still keeps coming in because tomorrow there's going to be double that amount. Um, but it's fascinating. Play around with it. I don't say it's going to happen for you necessarily. It might. But um, it's a fun experiment in any case. Um, and I think it helps you understand that money is not actually the root of all evil. Um, and you can uh, look up the actual scripture. I can't remember what it is, but um, there's much more to that story, that parable, that will help you understand that it is the um, the usury involved, the charging of high interest and taking advantage of people when they're down that is the problem, not the actual money and how it's used. So think about that. Um, and as you... Figure out what you would use money for. You know, I talked about updating what um, what brands you use, but replacing things, those things that have worn out that you've put off fixing, um, all the little things you've put off fixing, whether it's something in your wardrobe or, you know, you're trying to stretch something out by using every last drop, or it's just been a while since you bought a new pair of boots or something. All of those things that we put off buying because we don't quite have enough money now, is it worth the investment to have the upgraded version now? How much time are you wasting with the old computer that doesn't process well and you have to restart every couple hours? How much um, energy are you wasting in that car that only gets 10 miles to the gallon? You know, there's various things that an upgrade might actually end up saving you money in the long run. Solar panels, anyone? All these things add up to how you think about money, how you relate to money. And if you think about it as opening doors and possibilities in all the areas of your life, it can make a huge difference in how you're approaching the relationships in your life as well. Um, what about emergencies? You're saving those nuts and bolts and pieces of furniture for in case I need it or might need it someday. But what if you just had some cash on hand for emergencies, or you actually defined what an emergency would be for you and what you would need to survive that particular emergency and have that stuff on hand. And sometimes these are not one-off expenditures. You have to rotate your MREs, people. <laughs> you can't buy survival food and then never use it and expect it to be fresh when the emergency comes. So all of these things are connected, right? You need to invest in the stuff. You need to have a plan for how you're going to use it, when you're going to use it, and, and what you're going to do when you run out. It's about imagining a future. We have a really hard time visioning how things can be different. So get creative. Map it out. Go, go wild. Get super creative. What would you use? I've, you know, I'm not a particularly big time prepper by any means, but I lived in California in earthquake country for a while. And so I do tend to keep an emergency kit of about three to five days worth of stuff available at all times. It doesn't look like a giant container buried in the desert um, in case of the zombie apocalypse. Although once I have more money, perhaps, who knows? Um, but think about it. What would you use your money? For? Would you go into space? <laughs> Would you just plan on that emergency? Um, it, it's, it's fun on top of that. It's fun. Um, and then, you know, think about the actual tools for living your life. What, and, and where can you save? So 
what's the difference between a convenience factor or a convenience fee and spending the time? How does that relate to your money? If you can have your groceries and food delivered, oh my gosh, it may not save as much time in the beginning while you're setting things up, but after a while, once you have your lists established, it saves quite a bit of time. You are spending more money on it, but it saves quite a bit of time. And what could you be using that time for? Could you be hustling your side gig? Could you be knitting something that you don't have to buy? Could you be... Um, making some food for those emergencies, what is it you could do with that time you're saving and then would it be worth the effort? Or is it worth driving all over town to save one penny on your gas, wasting that energy and that time, or just go to the, the closer, more convenient gas station that charges slightly more? This is the way people don't think through how they're actually spending their money. You know, there's a lot of talk about the latte factor and we can talk a little bit more about that when we come back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection and we're on Bold Brave TV Network. See you on the other side of the break. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. And before the break, we were talking a little bit about what, um, what you could do with your money that isn't evil. Um, and how uh, just just upgrading the things that are already in your life can help you experience the difference between quality over quantity and help you make more conscious decisions about your money. Is it saving you time or is it costing you more? Um, and having exactly the right tool for the job, what does that do to you in terms of your self-worth? I know every time I upgrade something and get exactly the thing I wanted, not the thing I settled for, I feel better about myself and my accomplishments. And you can always use these things as rewards while you're developing new habits so that it serves a du dual purpose. You can say, I'm going to get that new computer once I've completed, you know, 30 days of my workout routine, um, without interruption, or, you know, you can use it for that celebratory carrot that helps you do the things you need to do. So it can help you with your procrastination, which helps with time and getting things done and feeling better about yourself because you are capable and getting things done and you, um, are rewarded with just the exact right thing that you wanted. It's a result of your efforts not a result of the results of those efforts, which is a little bit tricky to think about, but it is the consistency of paying attention to things and doing things regularly that gets you the biggest bang for your buck. So that's what you want to reward. And using um, the things you've been meaning to get or have been settling on a lesser version of is a great way to make that happen. And spending money is just as important as saving money because as you learn, uh, when things go, uh, when you start empowering yourself about how many works, you got to put it out into, um, the environment. So other people can pick it up for their ideas and put it back, um, buying the things they need to implement their ideas. So it's got to circulate. That's not to say you don't want to save some for emergencies, but figure out what that looks like first. And then you can plan for both saving and spending at the same time. Um, so the biggest limiting money belief I had to overcome, and I'm still overcoming it, I find it really difficult to not work so hard. Um, you don't have to work so hard to make money. I mentioned it's easier to make more money than it is to make less money. Figuring out how to make it can be difficult, especially if you have a hard time imagining. So all these things I've talked about, places where you can imagine different, will help you also imagine how you can make money. What could a side hustle look like? What would a better job look like? What would living in cheaper environments look like? Um, not cheaper in terms of bad quality, but cheaper in terms of less expensive on your day-to-day -day budget, that budget thing, that allocated buckets of how you're going to spend your money. Um, and you don't have to work less if you don't want to, but you also don't have to work more just to do it. It's really strange. I found... Um, if I set things up, I would have to work hard a little bit in the beginning to set stuff up. It's just like 
clearing out your closet and setting it up for success so you can get dressed easily and put your uh, laundry away in record time. You want to think it through a little bit. You've got to do some evaluation. You've got to make some decisions. You have to create some structure around it. Think through what the routines would be. But then once it's in place, it runs itself. It now takes me about between an hour and a half and three hours a day to run my business. That is not servicing the clients, but the running of my business. When I first started, it was eight to 10 hours a day. And so knowing that as you put things in place, um, and it may not even be passive income, maybe you do something like um, consulting or counseling or something that you only wanna do a couple days a week, but it helps you bring in a little bit extra money every month and you still have your regular job. Maybe it is a lemonade stand or something at the farmer's market on the weekends. Who knows? There's so many different ways to make money. Um, maybe you're a day trader. Who knows? Um, but if you don't ever think about how you might work less and make more, both balancing how to bring more income in with how many expenses can you eliminate or um, make unnecessary by living a different life, you can uh, end up with more money. That's the bottom line. And the biggest part of that, imagining, imagineering, envisioning a future, is that it brings clarity. You get to try things on in your mind before you actually do them. So before you just say, I'm going to quit my job and go get another job without having one lined up, you might envision what skills you want to take with you to the new job or what you would like to um, seek out in terms of location of that new job. Is it closer to your house so you don't have to drive as far or drive as often? Maybe you could walk some days. What is it that you would like? to be able to express who you are and how you want to live, how you want to be in the world that can provide you that uh, more joyful work experience. What is it you really enjoy doing? And is there a way to make money at that, whether it's for yourself or someone else? Um, I love being an entrepreneur, but I also know not everyone is cut out to be an entrepreneur. It is a much bigger risk than working for someone else, but it allows me to work less in a lot of different ways. And it allows me to work when I want to work and make more during those times. So you get to figure it out for yourself, what works for you, your family, your situation. Um, yeah, clarity leads to less hard. If you know what you have, you are oriented to how you track things. Um, you know how money works and where your money currently is and how you're currently spending it. Um, it helps you know how much you actually need. So that's the other thing that's interesting. How many people don't know how much money they spend every day? Have you ever tracked your spending? I mean, down to the penny. How much was that latte, the latte factor that, uh, you know, is always talked about? It is not saying you can never go have a fancy coffee. It is saying, do you need the fancy one every day? Or could you have a fancy one every other day? Or could you make fancy ones at home where they're less expensive? Or could you just switch to actual coffee instead of a latte? What can you do to spend less on something you enjoy that means you don't have to work so hard? Because right now, most Americans are working to pay for things they already bought. They're paying it off instead of making a decision from who and how I want to be in the future and is this thing gonna be the thing that services that? So it's all about being conscious in our decision-making. And we'll talk more about that after the break. Get the Streamline Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Links here somewhere, down there I think. And today we've been talking about money, mindset, limiting beliefs, and the fact that you may not know how money works. Um, so let's start imagining a better way to be with money, empowering ourselves because we don't have to be bad at money. Um, we can learn how much money people actually have um, by playing with the bigger numbers. So you don't have to think that all rich people are greedy jerks. And we've talked about how money isn't necessarily the root of all evil. It is just an enhancer of whoever and however you already are. And 
my favorite, of course, is you don't have to work so hard to make more money. You can actually work less and make more. So having those things in mind, the most important part of it is to start paying attention to your money. And I do also have, don't forget, the one minute mail solution on my website, morethanorganized.net slash mail dash in dash one. You can download that. And one of the pieces to that um, mail solution is a place to record all your different accounts and account numbers and how to access your accounts. So it will help you start tracking the money and getting oriented where you are with your own money. Um, I'm super excited that next week I'm going to have a guest. Um, I have um, Leslie Josell of Order Out of Chaos. She is a colleague of mine in the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. She specializes in helping students, um, especially students with ADHD, be productive and get all their work done. And I can't wait to talk to her because you may not know this, but I have mild ADHD myself. And um, the solutions she has don't work just for students. They work for everybody. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and as always, your comments are welcome. I would love to hear what you have to think about how you do money is how you do everything and how connecting your beliefs about money can help your relationships and your clutter control as well and your schedule. I think the schedule is the most important piece of how you spend your money and how you make your money is what does it do to your time? Stop complaining about time. Um, so don't forget, you can comment and send me those comments and feedback and questions to Miriam at more than Um, where there's lots of resources. Let's see. The other thing I, I just want to say before we go is that imagination and this trying things on for size in our brains is actually a really cool way you can also clear clutter. So you can sit on your couch or the edge of your bed and look around a room and just think, what would happen if I didn't have that? And what would happen if I didn't have that? Or what would I like instead of that? And you can kill two birds with one stone, as it were, and figure out what you're going to upgrade and how you're going to reward yourself while figuring out what you're letting go of because letting go is just as important. Um, yeah, okay, so I also, if you have any specific questions you'd like for me to ask the next guest, Leslie Josell of Order Out of Chaos about ADHD and um, productivity, let me know. Um, I'm happy to um, put those questions into the show. And let's see, I don't have a whole lot more to say today. What do I want to say? The um, play that double game. I want to hear what you what happens for you when you do that. And um, you know, don't forget the one minute mail solution kit will get you started on tracking your money every day. Try a spending journal, see where you're spending your money and how much money you actually need to make. And I will see you next week. In the meantime, have a delightful day. This is Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection, and we're on Bold Brave TV Network.